The PIC32 has a single analog to digital converter, or ADC for short. This ADC converts analog voltages on the pins into numbers the PIC can read. In fact, this is a 10-bit ADC, so that means every voltage between 0 and 3.3 volts can be converted into a number between 0 and 2 to the 10th minus 1. So this is 0 to 1023. So and a voltage in between here is converted between 0 and 1023. So there's one ADC on the PIC, but there's actually 16 pins that are capable of doing analog input. So those pins are labeled AN0 to AN15. And these share the same physical pins as the digital I.O. port B. Now, if we have 16 pins but only one device, how does this work? So more or less, this is a simplified diagram of this. Each pin here, AN0, AN1, all the way down to AN15, go into a device called a multiplexer. And essentially, what the multiplexer lets us do is, in software on the PIC, we can select which one of these pins is output over here. So let's say we've selected AN0. So, and let's say that AN0, this has a voltage of 2. Well, now this pin here will have a voltage of 2. So that's the first step. The first step in analog to digital conversion is selecting the proper pin. The next step is holding the voltage. So that means that this goes into a sample and hold circuit. So we have a differential amplifier here. And in general, we'll say that this negative end is connected to ground, but we can connect it to other reference signals as well. And then our, the voltage that we want to measure is here. Then there's a switch and a capacitor. So to begin sampling, we close the switch. And to end sampling, the switch is open. So when the switch is closed, this capacitor charges. And the idea is we want it to charge to the value of the difference between this signal and this signal. But since this signal is 0 volts, we want it to reach the value here of 2 volts. Typically, this is a really small capacitor. So this happens really quickly. And we need to make sure that we'll call this our sampling time, TS, is long enough so that this capacitor can be charged to the proper value. OK, the next step in this is the conversion step. So this is where we're going to actually convert the voltage that we've measured into a number. So the way that this works is as follows. So remember, because of the sample circuit, this capacitor now holds the voltage that was on the pin. And to, just to show this graphically, this is 3.3 volts. Let's say the voltage is here. OK. So on the pick, there's a device called a digital to analog converter which is essentially the opposite of an analog to digital converter. So here, we can take numbers. Um, on the PIC, it takes 10 bits. But for this example, let's just say it takes 3 bits. So on the PIC, this would be 10. But it'll have 3 bits. And it will, each number corresponds to a voltage. So for instance, since we have 3 bits here, 1, 0, 0, this will be a voltage halfway through the range. So let's say. This will be here. So let me actually switch colors here. So the DAC, the PIC will instruct the DAC to output binary 100, or in the case of the actual PIC, there'll be nine zeros after the one, but we're just doing three here. 
And then this voltage will be compared to the voltage on that holding capacitor. In this case, the voltage is that we've output is lower than the voltage on the holding capacitor. So that means that we're going to keep this one here. So, and in our next step, we're going to bisect this range. So now we know we're in the upper half. So we're going to go output this voltage there. So the second one makes it go a higher voltage, and it's going to be halfway between the halfway point and the top point. And we're going to compare the voltage that the DAC output to the voltage of the signal. And this time, we're, our voltage that we output is higher than the signal. So that means that we must be lower. So now we know that this must be a 0. And now we're going to output a 1 here. And we're, let's say we're slightly lower. And this is where you see that we have limited resolution. So we're never going to hit the exact voltage exactly. Um, and if we're higher, which we are, because I drew this right below the voltage, just to show that this is being accurate, we'll keep the 1. But if our signal happened to be here instead, then we'd choose a 0 instead. So as you can see, it depends. We keep, essentially, this is like a binary search. So we output a voltage, determine whether we're higher or lower, and that gives us the next significant digit until we get all the way down to our last digit. Here it's only 3. In the real thing, it's 10. And by doing this fairly conceptually simple process, we can get an estimate of what that voltage is and convert it to a number.